you are once again welcome to this channel if this is the first time you are visiting i encourage you to go ahead hit the subscription button subscribe and share this video share this video so you could support our program for us to bring you more videos in the future i'll first of all have to apologize for the long delay in bringing the sequel to the part one of this video in the part one i show you how i do my designs and how i do my cutting list before i go to the shop to do the cuttings then how i also showed you how i do the bounding how i bound the edges of my gables before i start the assembly the name of my company is called advanced woodworking and kitchen cabinetry we build kitchen cabinets and built-in wardrobes and we are located at abuakwa kumasi and we build cabinets for all over the country ghana In this video, I'm going to show you how I put together my kitchen cabinet boxes. The shorter the kitchen cabinet in length, the better. Most kitchen cabinet makers will put up long kitchen cabinet boxes just to save material. Long kitchen cabinet boxes end up being weak, especially when heavy countertops such as marble, Korean or quartz tops are placed on them. With the exception of the same cabinet which we build at 36 inches, all our kitchen cabinets are built at 32 inches in length. Therefore making our kitchen cabinets durable and more stronger. Now let's see the equipment and the items that are required to build up this cabinet. First, I'll be using the nail gun together with an inch and a half staple pins. I'll also be using two inches Philip head countersink screws. Imported from Canada, this is very durable and brick resistant. I'll be using Philip head screw bit and then countersink bits as well. I will also be using 3 quarter pan head screws. This is the screws that I use to nail the plastic feet to the cabinets. I will also be using Marathon plastic feet imported from Canada. These plastic feet prevent the cabinet from getting soaked or damaged in case of accidental flood in your kitchen. Then I have my cordless impact screwdriver and my drill bit which I will be using as well. Before I put together my cabinet, I first have to check if I have all the necessary parts I require to make a kitchen cabinet box. Then I'll go ahead and check if my gables and my cleats are all equal in length. If your cleats and the bases are not equal in length and you put them together, you are going to, in the end, you are going to have cabinets which are off square, which you will not want to have that problem during installation. So first, it is necessary to check if all the parts like the cleats and the bottom pieces are all equal in length before you put them together so having checked this to find out that they are equal in length i'll go ahead and i'll put them together using my staple gun and my staple pin i will now make a countersink hole then i'll put my screws the countersink hole prevents my screw from splitting the plywood Now I'll do the same to the other side of the gable. Now I'll put my box and lock it up with my top plates. It's about time to put on my plastic feet. I'm using this plastic feet imported from Canada. This plastic feet prevents your cabinet from getting soaked in case there's accidental flood in your kitchen. It is heavy duty and very durable. It can sustain the weight of any countertop. Now that my cabinet is done, I'll put it down and repeat the process. I'll do the same to all the cabinets until I'm done with my 10 base cabinets. Now that I'm done building my lower cabinets, I'll go ahead and build my upper cabinets. 
the upper cabinets are built the same way as the lower cabinets. The only difference is that the upper cabinet has a solid piece at the top and a solid bottom. It also has a hidden cleat at the back. The cleat enables me to nail the upper cabinets to the wall. Now let's see how I build my upper cabinets. Now I'm done building my upper cabinets. I'm going to build my tall cabinet, the tall cabinet, which is also called the pantry unit. Here, the pantry unit is going to be built differently than the regular pantry units because I have one side of the pantry unit being exposed and I'll not like to show my nails or my screws hanging around the cabinets. I have to hide the nails so that you not see the nails or the screws when you walk into the kitchen. So here I'm going to use the method called the pocket screwing method. The pocket screwing method allows me to hide my screws. First, I'll have to make my pocket holes. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'll go ahead and put all my cabinets together using the pocket screws. Now I have my cabinets built without exposing the screws on the side of the cabinets. I'll put it aside and move on to the next project. Like I said, this cabinet is custom designed kitchen cabinet. It has so many features that are not common in other kitchen cabinets. Example is the appliance garage. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I build my special appliance garage for this particular kitchen. I will also show you how I put together the island, which is also special in this case. The island has a built-in dishwasher, a built-in sink, and it also has a built-in and a hidden washing machine. So stay tuned for the next video or tune in again for the next video and I'll be showing you how I did or build this kitchen cabinet. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe, share and comment. Your subscription is a booster for us to bring you more videos now and in the future. This has been an Advanced Kitchen Production 2022. Thanks for watching and see you again at our next video.